What makes for a good frog? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's what we're going to talk about today on this video, mainly because I'm extremely passionate about this topic, about frog fishing. Not just frog fishing. I do love frog fishing. It's probably one of my favorite ways to catch bass. Absolutely love it. I'll throw a frog even in December and January here in Texas. Not necessarily because they eat it a lot, but just because I love it so much. Even if one eats it, it's worth it. And sometimes I can get one too. But, but today we're going to talk about a couple of things you need to consider when picking out a frog. All right. And we're going to break down those, those details because it's extremely important because the right frog can lead to a ton of catches or the wrong frog can lead to a ton of bites, but a ton of misses. We're going to talk about it today. So what's going on guys? My name is Jeremy Francis. I run the page Fishing Lone Star and the channel here on YouTube. You can check it out below. Hopefully it'll link below. I think it will. But anyways, you can check it out. Today we're talking about frog fishing. I've recently picked up this frog from Lunker Hunt. It is the Kraken series, the walking frog. And right out of the box, I was really impressed with it. But as I was looking it over, there's a couple of things uh, that I normally take a look at frogs, right? Right out of the packaging. And I can almost tell you right away if it's going to be a great frog or not. Now, I actually have used this one on the water, so I can indeed say that it has great action, the design, the softness, uh, the color, right? All those things are important. I can say that this frog has them, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is when you're picking out frogs, the color to consider, the design to consider, and the overall softness of the frog. But let's start in reverse order, right? Let's start first with the softness of frogs. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but you've probably seen those videos of people taking frogs and sticking them in a boiling pan of water. All they're doing is trying to soften this frog, right? They're trying to soften the, the easeability, if you will, of when that bass bites, how easy that plastic moves down and those hooks are exposed. Now, I will tell you, this frog right here from Lunker Hunt, again, the Kraken Series Walking Frog, right out of the package, I was super impressed with how soft it is. There's been times I've taken a frog right out of the package, realized how hard it is, put it right back in the package and stick it right back in the mailbox to send right back to the company I ordered it from or take it right back to the store because I will not fish a stiff frog and I'm not about to spend my time boiling a frog in the kitchen. That's just not gonna happen. All right, nor should it happen because your frog should be soft right out of the box. This one is really, really like this one right out of the box. Second thing you need to consider is the design of the frog. Now, whether you're fishing a popping frog or a walking frog, this one just happens to be a walking frog or even a buzz frog. The only one of those this wouldn't apply to is the buzz frog because the buzz frog is literally just a straight retrieve. The little legs are going to kick behind it. Not a big deal, right? There's really not, not much design functionality you need to worry about in that frog. However, if you're fishing a walking frog or a popping frog, all right, most time you want it to chug forward or walk side to side. One big component, let's just talk about just the walking frog because obviously a popping frog is gonna have that little cup to lip, that's gonna spit water on its own. But a walking frog, it's really important. You see this, this keeled design that looks like the bottom of a boat? That's really important for turning, all right? Imagine if, if like my bass boat here, if it didn't have a V'd off hole and it was just, just like a U-shape on bottom, if I went to turn, the thing would not turn very well because it, it didn't have any edges to turn on, right? Same thing with the frog. When a frog, if you look at the design of this walking frog, it has that keel design on bottom, all right? Now, the frogs that I use that I'm walking and twitching, all right? That's why it's called a walking frog is to walk it. If it doesn't have a hard line on the bottom and almost a center line to it, again, I put it in the box, send it right back to the store because it's just, it's not going to walk. Now you may be able to twitch it and it kind of do this, but it's not going to hunt, right? The head's not going to bob back and forth or side to side. This one I can tell you, I was really impressed with. It does just that. It hunts really well side to side and with very small twitches because of that kill design, it will really kick side to side. It walks really easily, even for those that aren't maybe used to or accustomed to walking a frog. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the color. Don't overcomplicate this, guys. Pick a color, pick your favorite color. My, my top two favorites are gonna be a white, a solid white, or some sort of greenish yellow. A lot of guys like to throw black or black and blue or black and, black and brown. Totally fine, I do that. But out of these three, 
yellow and green or green and yellow, a black and a white, that's really all you need. And here's one thing that a lot of people know, but not many people really talk about, or maybe they do, is it's really the bottom that matters, right? The fish, it's a top water lure. That's what fish are seeing is the bottom of the lure. That's what you want. You want to pick a, a frog based upon the bottom color. This on top doesn't matter as much. It's the bottom that matters, all right? So that's what you wanna look for. Like this one's all white on bottom. I'm sorry, I had those backwards. This one's all white on bottom. This one's all black on bottom. This one's yellow, right? Doesn't matter what the top really is. It's all about the bottom color. All right, I told you we were gonna talk about the softness of the frog, the design on bottom of the frog, the way kind of the hooks are as well. Uh, it kind of goes along with the design. But then also the color, we cover those three. I wanna give you one more point, all right? A lot of times if your frog is very collapsible, right? Right here, it has to have somewhere for the air in the frog to escape, which is this little hole right here. Now, oftentimes people don't like how collapsible some frogs are. Take that back, they like how collapsible they are. They don't like the consequence or the result. The result is that little hole right there allows water to get in kind of easily. Maybe every three or four casts, you gotta pick it up to squeeze all the water out. Now, sometimes I like the water, in the frog, it helps me cast it further and it sits down in the water. Instead of sitting on top, it may sit down a little bit in the water, right? So sometimes I like the water in the frog. Sometimes I don't, so I'll squeeze it out. But if you want to prevent any water from getting in your frog, just take a dab of super glue, dab it right there, right? That's gonna prevent it. Now, what's also gonna prevent it for is the air escaping the frog, okay? So a lot of times when frogs are really stiff, they don't take in very much water in the bottom because they're not designed to really be very collapsible. Your more collapsible frogs will take on a little bit of water. Just put some super glue right there. You're not gonna lose the softness. You're not gonna lose much hookup ratio and it'll solve the water getting in it. So if you're having that problem with any of your frogs, use super glue. Most guys carry super glue anyways for like their soft plastics, their trailers, their jigs, etc. So there's a quick tip for making sure you keep the water out of your frogs as well. All right, guys, that is it. If you look in my topwater box, you're gonna see very few frogs. I might have two or three different models, if you will, and within those models, I'm gonna have three colors. I'm gonna have a yellow, I'm gonna have, or a green, I'm gonna have a white, I'm gonna have a black. That's it, don't overcomplicate this. Where you want to really dive into the details, though, is the design of the frog. You wanna make sure that killed bottom is there if you're really wanting a frog to walk back and forth. Trust me, it's gonna make a world of difference. Obviously, you want one that's got good hooks, this one definitely does right here by Lunker Hunt. They did really well designing this frog. Uh, and then also just the softness. The softness, you can just pick it up right away and tell that it's a very easy to, uh, to collapse frog. It's going to yield a lot of hookups for you. You're gonna catch more fish versus missing more fish, which is usually the biggest frustration in frog fishing. Again, my name is Jeremy. Make sure you check out my channel, Fish and Lone Star. Subscribe right here to the Monster Bass channel. Go back as well and watch the video. Uh, that was just posted about frog fishing. If you want to see the rod, the reel, the equipment, how to walk it, where to target, all those things. We didn't cover that today, but it was recently covered in another video. So go back and watch that on the Monster Bass channel and get out there and go catch a Monster Bass.